when I mention, and I say federal prison, they say, oh, what, what, what do people think when you talk about that? I don't care. Are you serious? I had a calling before you had a criticism. I had a calling before you had a comment on the internet. That's the problem with some of you. You're so concerned living about people's comments and living about their criticism and what, what do they think? Or what will they think if I talk about this? What will you think if you don't do what you're called to do? That's the difference between us who have great impact and small-minded little people who are so concerned about other folks that, that the truth of the matter is, when you really are working in your destiny and your calling and you're moving in power, you don't have time to backbite about other people. I had to learn that too. I've never been criticized about anybody that was doing more than me. You take that for what it's worth. You're watching Daryl J. Bennett Live. I'm so excited to be with you and I can't wait to help you live a higher, more prosperous, more powerful, and more purpose-filled life. Let me tell you about myself. I'm Daryl J. Bennett. I wrote my first book at 18 years old. I started my first company at 21, and I graduated from Harvard Law School at 24. I know how to help people move into another stratosphere of destiny to operate at a higher level. And that's what I'm here to help you do. I'm Daryl J. Bennett on Daryl J. Bennett Live. You don't want to miss this. Your life is never going to be the same again. My name is Daryl J. Bennett, and you have a date with destiny today. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about today, how do you meet your destiny? How do you walk into your destiny? How do you begin to go past your history? move past the gravitational pull of what your life used to be and move into a higher plane, move into what you're meant to do. Don't you understand that? That there's a life you were born to and then there's a life that you were destined to. There's a difference. There's a difference between the life that you came into the earth in and the life that you're meant to live. There's something you're meant to do with your life. It's great. It's spectacular. It's amazing. It's so big that even if you did everything that's in your mind to do, you still wouldn't have even scratched the surface. You are more amazing than you could ever imagine. You're more powerful. You're more spectacular. You have something on the inside of you that will literally ignite the world. But it's only if you recognize that you have a destiny, you have a purpose. There is an assignment over your life. I want to set the very high intention that over the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to think differently about your destiny. You're important to God. I want you to know that you're important to God. You're important to the world. There's something spectacular and amazing that you're meant to do. You're not just here to work a job. You're not. You're not just here to make a few dollars and then die. You're not. There's more. And you know it. You know there's more. You just needed someone like me to remind you of that. We're going to talk today about how you can begin to discover your life's purpose, how you can begin to walk into your life's calling, how you can have a higher level of confidence and, and competence around your gifts, around your skills. I want you to walk away from our time together today with a deeper level of self-awareness, of insight. You don't need more information. You, you can go to the internet for that. You don't even necessarily need more instruction, how to and how to and how to. What you need is more insight, more sight into you. You studied all of the great people on earth or what they call great people. That's why I wanted you to see the background. But you want to know something that separates these folks from you? It's nothing. Nothing intrinsically. Everything they had, you have. Anybody that has ever done anything powerful, great, spectacular in the world has done it with the same core resources that you have. It might look a little different, your gifts, but there's something special about you. They were made in the image of God and so are you but they recognized it. They seized it. You're important to God and there's a destiny over your life. Away with people who spend all of their time talking about your history, 
talking about all the things that went wrong. By the way, we're going to talk about how adversity is a clue to your calling. We're going to talk about how crises lead you to your calling. I'm going to share a little bit with you about my own life and about how some of the dark places in my life led me to understand the light that was on the inside of me. You know, there's a light on the inside of you. You were born with what we call a God spark. You have it. You have it. That's why you'll never die. Oh, you'll transition. Everybody will eventually. But you've transitioned many times if you think about it over your life. But you're never going to die because you're divine. Because you're made in the image and likeness of the same presence that created the entire cosmos. We know scientifically that what is in the stars, in the heavens, in their courses above, scientifically we know that same molecular structure is in your body. We know that there's enough electricity in your cells to power the whole world. You haven't even begun to tap into the greatness of who you are. I want you to take a journey with me over the next 40 minutes or so. I want you to think about your life. You spent so much time thinking about other people's lives. You spent so much time thinking about your job. You spent so much time thinking about how you can get more paper dollars, papers with old folks' faces on it. But I want to show you that if you seek first the kingdom, everything you've ever worried about, everything you've ever wanted, everything you've ever desired will come to you. I want to show you how I live. I don't live from a place of efforting. I live from a place of ease. I want you to see the difference. I want you to see the difference. You were never meant to toil for other people. You were meant to create like God because you're made in that image. That's why you have the dream and it won't die. It can't die. It's a dream that's been passed to you from the divine. And in some cases has come through generations of your family. And if not you, then who? If not now, then when? You're important to God. And there's something spectacular that you're meant to do. I'm going to keep saying it until you understand it. I'm going to keep saying it until you think differently about your life. I'm going to keep saying it until you stop downing yourself. I'm going to keep saying it until you stop the inner conversation where you judge yourself and you shame yourself because of things you've done in your past. I've been there. I've been there. But have you ever considered that everything you ever did was to lead you right to this place right now so you could come into an understanding of who you really are? I told you before, I'll say it again, that life will borrow pain to provoke you to your purpose. Have you considered that all of the pain you've ever had was only to bring you closer into alignment with your divine assignment? All things are going to work together for the good of them that know and that are called and I want you to know something. You're called. You're called. You've been called by name before the beginning of the world, before the earth came into formation. The divinity that's in you was calling unto you. Deep was calling unto deep and deep is still calling unto deep. You're important to God. And there's something special and spectacular that you're meant to do. Today, we're going to talk about three things as we talk about calling. We're going to talk about patterns. We're going to talk about problems and we're going to talk about promises. We're going to talk about patterns. We're going to talk about problems and we're going to talk about promises because I want you to know there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. There's something great. You're made for more than that job. You really are. You know that though. You, you're, you're more than the neighborhood you came from. You're more than the, than the country that you, you were born into. You're more than, the, than even the family that you were birthed through. You're more than that. You are. You're more than the sum of the things that you've done in the past. You are. I'm here to tell you that. You're more than what people said that you were. They, you, you know, it's hard for people who don't know who they are to try to tell you who you are. <laughs> it's hard for folks who don't value their own identity to give you value of yours. 
And for some of you, you've listened to people who've demeaned themselves. And so naturally they've demeaned you. They didn't mean to do it, but they did it anyway because it's what they knew. For some of you, you were raised in households where your whole life you were made to feel like you were less than, maybe because of things you felt inside you could never talk to anybody about because of dreams you had. And I'm here to tell you, you're important to God. And there's something special and spectacular you're meant to do with your life. And I want you to know that because if you know it, then you'll start to walk in it. Manifestation always follows consciousness. If you can become consciously aware that there's a great assignment over your life, if you become consciously aware that you're living lower than you were ever meant to live, if you become consciously aware that there is a great destiny over your life, it will change everything you're doing. Imagine the confidence you'd walk around the world in if you really believed you were important to God and that there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. Imagine, imagine how you would walk through the world. Imagine the things you wouldn't believe when people said this about you or that about you or called you this name or that name when they tried to attach a label to you. I want you to know there's something amazing about you. Now, last week we talked, we began this discussion and we talked about calling. We talked about the fact that you're loved by the divine with an everlasting love. You need to know that. An everlasting love, a love that humanity can't quite understand. It's a love that's so incomprehensible that we don't even have a word in the English language or any other language, that type of love. A love that's so unconditional that it is nothing that you can do to ever separate yourself from the presence that's never an absence. It's that type of love. Away with people who would tell you that you did something that separated you from God. It's a lie. That was the story, the original story of Satan. That was the original story of the serpent in the garden. Slithering around, telling lies and saying you're separate from God when you're one with God. You always were. There never was a separation. It was just a separation of awareness. There was never an actual separation. There was a break in awareness. But you've always been one with the divine. To, to which of us, to which of us who are fathers can say that our sons could ever do anything at any point to make them less our son? Even if, even if, even if we don't talk to them, even if we're estranged, even if we're angry, the DNA itself speaks. You, your divine nature, your spiritual DNA is intrinsically wrapped up in the presence that's never an absence. And it's nothing you can ever do to separate yourself from that. Now, there are things you can do to lose the awareness of it. And that's why we see the world that we see today. That's why we see the death and the destruction and the meanness and the, and the maliciousness that we see today. Because people have lost a, an awareness of who they are. The easiest thing someone can steal from you is something you don't know you have. How many people have sold their birthright for a bowl of stew? Because they didn't know they had a birthright. Did you know you have a birthright? A spiritual divine birthright that will translate into prosperity here on earth. Did you know that? Did you know that there's a destiny for you and expect it in? I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the divine. I know the plans that I have for you, plans to build you up, plans to gird you up, plans to make you great, plans to manifest that which is on the inside of you. You're special to God and you're important to God. And there's something spectacular you're meant to do on this earth. I want you to know that. I want you to live in that. Now, last week I asked you to ask yourself every day and to write it down and to get quiet 
and to reflect and to let the spirit which is on the inside of you to speak to the spirit that is you and inform you about this one question. Why was I sent? I asked you to ask yourself that. It wasn't that I was asking you to intellectualize it. I want you to come into a higher plane and to allow your spiritual nature to guide your destiny. I told you that answers are the employees of questions. I told you that. They're the employees of questions. You have not gotten the right answers heretofore because you have not, my friend, asked the right questions. Why was I sent? You weren't just born. Before you were ever conceived in your mommy's belly, you were conceived in the mind of God because you're important to God and there's something spectacular you're meant to do on earth. And when you were conceived in the mind of God, in the mind of the divine, in the mind of the presence that's never in absence, you were conceived with purpose. Yes, you were. Your mommy and daddy may not have understood it, but then again, it's called a call, not a conference call. They weren't on it. <laughs> they don't get it. They may never get it. And that's fine. But the, the, the call came to you. It wasn't three, four, five, six people on it. It wasn't a Zoom call. It was a direct call. Before the foundations of the world, you were in conversation with the divine. That's why you have what's called deja vu. It's not that you were here before, but it's that you were here before. If you get what I mean. You were with the presence that was never in absence before the earth ever came into manifestation. You were conceived with purpose. You were conceived with love. You were conceived in intention to do something spectacular on this earth. And if you don't do it, if you don't do it, this is the question I want to pose to you. If you don't do it, who will do it? If you don't do it, who in your family will suffer? Who in your family is suffering because you haven't come into an understanding that you are important to God and there is something spectacular you're meant to do with your life? What communities could be better if you lived in your authenticity? It's a word we throw around a lot, authenticity, authenticity. I'm going to tell you what authenticity is. It's being in divine alignment. That's authenticity. No, you can't be whatever you want to be. It is a lie. It is a lie. You cannot be whatever you want to be. You better be what you're called to be. You better be what you're destined to be. That's the true, true journey of life. Coming into alignment with what your soul's purpose is what your soul agreed to before you ever reached this earth plane. There was an agreement. That's why you think the way you do. That's why you think the way you do. You don't think like them because you're not like them. I heard it once said, we all are under the same sun, but we don't all share the same horizons. You're important to God. It's something spectacular you're meant to do. And see, this is the way that it's set up. And then we're going to take a break. But I, I want you to know the way it's set up. Remember the old joke? He said, the way my bank account is set up. The way this thing is set up is that the divine partners with humanity to achieve the purpose. So you've been spending your whole life Asking why is it this way and when is somebody going to change it? But you're the one. Don't you get that? It's you. It's you. You've been living in frustration. Listen to me. You've been living in frustration because you've waited on someone to come save you and come deliver you and come change. And I'm here to tell you, the Calvary is never going to come. It's never going to come. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? You are an expression of the divine, living, breathing, a walking, talking instrument through which the absence that's never a presence is fulfilling the mission on earth. You're important to God, and there's something spectacular you're meant to do. How would your life look if you realize and recognize that you have a part to play in the patchwork of human history.
It's not just these folks behind me. It's not just the so-called kings and queens of the world because you're a king. You're a holy nation, a royal priesthood set apart. How would you think about your life, your purpose, your calling, your destiny different if you recognized there is no great or small in the divine? We're all great. The question is, will you recognize it and live it? We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Stay with me. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for watching. Wherever you are, are all around the world, it's not an accident. Today's show is about a date with destiny. You're important to God and there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. All right, let's talk about patterns. Let's talk about problems. Let's talk about promises. Patterns. What is the pattern of your life? See, this takes self-awareness. It's, it's a quality that's often overlooked. It's a great, a great strength to be aware of your life, to study your life, like you've studied some of these folks behind me. Study your life. What things keep coming up? What problems do you keep encountering? What feelings do you continue to have? Patterns. Do you know something? People who have great impact have the ability to recognize patterns. As above, so below. Even, even, even nature outpictures this. Every year, no matter where you are in the world, every year you start to see certain cycles. Every year around the same time, it gets cold or colder. Every year around the same time, the days shorten. Every year around the same time, the foliage and the trees start to look a certain way. Every year this happens. There's a cycle. There's a cycle in patterns and seasons in nature. There's a cycle in patterns and seasons in history. There's a pattern and there's cycles and there's seasons in your life. But are you aware of that? What are the patterns in your life? When people come to me and they say, Daryl, I don't understand what my gifts are. Where do I start? Actually, when people say, where do I start with my purpose? I say, start with your gifts. Start with the things that you're naturally great at. No, not your skills, not your skills, not your skills. We go so quickly to skills. We go so quickly to the place of our resume and reading off all of these things that you learned along the way. I want to talk about the things that you were downloaded with from the moment you came. I, I already told you that you were in conversation with the divine before even the earth came into a manifestation. Don't you recognize that? That there's been a calling over your life before, before the worlds were formed. So the first clue to your life's purpose and your destiny is what are you naturally gifted with? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you either want? You do really, really well, meaning it's some trait or excuse me, characteristic or, or let me say it differently. It's something that you're doing a talent. That's what I want to say. A talent, or it's a trait slash characteristic. It's just something you are. Some people, you just have something. It's not something that you do, but it's something that, and it's, it's many things actually, but it's something you can think of probably first as I'm talking to you that it's like, it just differentiates you. That's a clue. It's a clue to your purpose. The road to discovering purpose, and I walk with people through this. I, I, I come to universities, I come to law schools, I come to social impact organizations, and I walk people through this. I really help people to understand in a deeper way, even on a business level. You know, you don't need to be starting a business around something that's not a gift. You don't need to be starting a business around something that is not divinely aligned with your life's purpose. That's, that's the problem with some of you. You have all of these plans, but many of the plans in the heart of a man, but it is the purpose of the divine that will stand. Are you aligned with the purpose of the divine? You might have a strong will, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you the divine's will is much stronger. 
So the question that I want you to ask yourself as you ask yourself, what am I, what's my purpose? What am I most gifted in? What, what, what am I most gifted in? This is how you can recognize it. What are the patterns in your life? Let me ask it more practically. Fill in the blank. What do people say when they say to you, you know, you're really good at dot, dot, dot. What is that? And what have you heard that said about you for as long as you can remember? That's a clue. Write that down. Write that down. Please write it with me. The Chinese have a saying, the palest ink is better than the strongest memory. I want you to write it down. Every time you've heard in your life, you're really, really good at dot, dot, dot. You really, really do this well, dot, dot, dot. What is that? I'm gonna get more practical. Your significant other, your spouse, the person you're with, <laughs> I'll leave that like that. For some of you, it might be several people. What is it they like about you most? See, people often don't see it because it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. I heard it put this way, you know, the, it's, the fish is often the last one to realize it's in water. So this is the importance of being around people that can help affirm the calling over your life. What consistently do you hear that you're good at? Maybe you down yourself because, you know, people have a tendency to do that. Oh, I'm not good at anything. All right. All right. All right. But I guarantee you, everybody does not share that thinking about you. I already told you, you, you are important to God and there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. So I want you to write that down. You are really good at dot, dot, dot. When you've heard that, you are really good at. What have you consistently heard people say? That's a sign. Where have you continued to succeed? This is what I help people do really simply when I'm helping them either start a business, build their business, build their brand, or rebuild their life from things that have happened. I have them write down every way they've ever made any type of money at all in the past five years. So write it all down, no matter how crazy it is, even if you just got a dollar for it. Any, any, anything at all. And what they start to see is it's a pattern. It's a pattern. You know, they call it the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of what you do brings 80% of the impact. What consistently are the places where you're winning? You need to know that about you. Do you know that about you? There are places where you keep winning. What's, what's the pattern? What is the rhythm of your life? The only difference between rhythm and noise is the understanding of the person who's listening to it. For one person, it's noise. But for another person, it's rhythm. You know the difference between rhythm and noise? It's understanding. And all you're getting, get understanding. For some of you, you'll speak a language in, in, in someone's presence because they don't understand the language, it's noise. For the person that you're speaking to, it's a rhythm. They get it. The difference maker in your life between all the things that are happening and you seeing the rhythm and recognizing it as a rhythm rather than seeing it as noise is understanding. Do you have an understanding of your life? I don't want you to be unaware. I would truly have you to in all you're getting, I want you to get understanding. And I want you to start with understanding you're important to God. And there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. That's the starting point I want you to start with. Where do you keep winning? Where do you see that you easily succeed where other people struggle? That's, the, that's rhythm. What comes to you so naturally, so easily? It's like a third hand. That's rhythm. What are the places and spaces and tools and resources where you just feel comfortable? That's rhythm. The difference between people who have great impact and people that are just living to live, or really just existing, 
is that people who have great impact, we understand that there's a rhythm to our life, just like there's a rhythm to music, good music. Hmm. There's a rhythm to speech when you do it well. There's, 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 there's a rhythm to the river. There's a rhythm to the way that the earth and the cosmos cyclical patterns are. There's a rhythm. Do you know the rhythm of your life? The ability to recognize patterns is going to be what's going to change your life and transform you. Then we're going to take a break in two minutes, but I want to say this and leave you here with this. One of the things that they taught us at law school most is the ability to recognize patterns. I told you I'm a graduate of Harvard Law School. And all law school is about really more than learning about the law, it's about learning patterns. It, it, that's what it's about. I, I, so for some of you, I might have saved you a hundred some thousand dollars because you wonder, well, what do they learn in law school, especially since afterwards to pass the bar, I had to take bar classes. So you think, well, what, was you, what were you learning in law school? Well, patterns. Patterns. To read five different cases and recognize what's the pattern. To look at a hundred years of history and be able to pull out what's the pattern. To be able to hear five different people make an argument and you had to recognize what was the pattern. It was pattern recognition. In fact, all of the tests that we took, this was the reason why it was so hard for many people when they first enter into law school because for most of college, tests were about information that you could just find on Google anyway. So we had been trained, as most people are trained, to, to do everything, excuse me, to do everything through you know, remembering information, reciting information, and spitting out information. But the moment and the and once we recognized, no pun intended, that law school was different, was that, oh, the tests were all about pattern recognition. You get a big fact pattern, meaning you get all of these, they would tell you all these things that had happened. Joe did this, and Susie had done this, and Andy did this, and, and you had to figure out what the pattern was. And one of the reasons I believe that People who go to law school, graduate and you know, become attorneys or whatever, and many of them often find themselves in positions of power and in law and in running companies. More people run Fortune 500 companies that have a Juris Doctor and graduate from law school than, any, than anything else, even that have MBAs. You wanna know why? Because the importance and the power of recognizing patterns will shift your entire life. Do you know the patterns in your life? That's where I'll leave you. Stay with me. We're coming right back. I'm so grateful for this platform. I'm grateful to the owner of this network and I'm grateful to the great people here for allowing me this platform. I just wanna say that, uh, I don't take this lightly. I'm grateful to you. I don't take it lightly that you're listening in your homes, in your cars, on the trains, wherever you might be listening to me on a tablet, a phone, uh, on the computer, on a big screen television. I think I look better on the big screen, y'all, but <laughs> you know, Wherever you are watching and listening to me, wherever you are in the world, I don't take it lightly. There's so many voices in the earth now. There are really so many voices. There's so many other places you can be listening to or places you can be or people you can be listening to. So I don't take this lightly. The most important thing you can give anybody is your attention. And so the fact you give me your attention, if only just for this moment, I don't take it lightly and I want to say thank you. So we talked about patterns because you are important to God. There is something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. But now I want to talk about problems. I want to talk about problems from a higher level. I want to talk about problems from a place of possibility. I want to talk about problems from a higher consciousness. Now, I told you to recognize patterns, you have to have self-awareness. To recognize the power in your problems, you have to have a higher level of consciousness. Your problem is what is going to take you to the next level. I've told this to you many times. Problems are not walls, they're doors. They're doors. The best thing that ever happened to that shepherd boy named David was Goliath because then he walked into his kingship. And I heard someone say to me, well, he was anointed way before he ever met Goliath. That makes my point all the more salient because he was anointed and guess where he went? Right back into the sheepfold. But it was Goliath that got him noticed by the king and literally took him from the sheepfold 
to the palace. What's the Goliath in your life? You, you notice that I'm taking you in the steps. See, the steps, <laughs> the steps of a good person, and you are a good person because you're made in the image of the divine, but the steps of a good person are ordered. I want to take you through the ordered steps. We started, we started with patterns. Now we're at problems. The reason why you got to recognize patterns is because when we come to problems, you're going to start to recognize there's a problem that keep coming, keeps coming up in your life. There's a problem that really, really bothers you. Do you recognize that what bothers you most, you're probably called to solve? That's why it grieves you most. But instead of being upset that people aren't necessarily upset about what you're upset about, use that as a clue, as a beacon, a honing light, that maybe this is what I'm supposed to solve. What's the problems that have gotten your life most in a rut. That's why I wrote the book, Come Back Swinging. I talk about my journey through federal prison. Yeah, because the truth of the matter is, the things that you probably don't want to talk about, the things that make you most feel a little weird, the things that you feel like if they knew, what would they think about me? That's probably the exact thing that's going to make you great. Can I tell you something? Every great person dealt with a great problem. I'm telling you, every person behind me, we can, go, we can go through it, but we don't have the time. Every person that has great impact, they dealt with a great problem. And often it was embarrassing. It was hurtful. It made them question themselves. It made them question their, their value to the world. It often was something that was so catastrophic that they thought they were going to die. And this is what I learned. The level of the problem that you're facing is often a sign of the level of the calling that you're meant to walk into. Problems aren't walls, they're doors. But my journey through federal prison and one of the worst, what I felt was the worst parts of my life, and I shouldn't say it's the worst because all things have worked together for my good and for the good of the divine who was working through me. But that is directly what has led to my impact today. The things that I learned through my journey, that's how I've built great businesses. This is, this is how I coach people through some of the hardest periods of their life. I can't coach somebody through something I wasn't touched by. So maybe it's different for them, their catastrophic circumstance, their rock bottom moment. But I know what it's like to be at rock bottom. I know what it's like to feel like you lost everything. I know what it's like to have people looking at you and pointing their finger. And, eh, eh, eh. You know that. You know the eh, eh, eh of the world. I still get people that say some of that when I mention and I say federal prison, they say, oh, what, what, what do people think when you talk about that? I don't care. Are you serious? I had a calling before you had a criticism. I had a calling before you had a comment on the internet. That's the problem with some of you. You're so concerned living about people's comments and living about their criticism and what, what do they think or what will they think if I talk about this? What will you think if you don't do what you're called to do? That's the difference between us who have great impact and small-minded little people who are so concerned about other folks that, that the truth of the matter is, when you really are working in your destiny and your calling and you're moving in power, you don't have time to backbite about other people. I had to learn that too. I've never been criticized about anybody that was doing more than me. You take that for what it's worth. Problems. No, it's not great to go through them. Oh, but it's great for what comes out of it. They did a study and they found that 50% of the companies in here, here in America, that on the Fortune 500 list, that 50% were started in an economic downturn, a recession, or an outright depression. 50%. What does that tell you? You have once heard that necessity is the mother of invention. I'll tell you this. You don't get to necessity until you come to a problem. You need a crisis. Now, I'm not speaking negatively over your life. Crises only means point of decision. It's small-minded people that made the word a bad thing. Crises only means it's a point of decision. It's a fork in the road. You need that. Because your whole life, you've been going the road more traveled. And that's why you haven't had the impact you're supposed to have. Because you're so concerned living for other people. But I want to bring you out of the world of living about what will they think if I do to what will I think about myself if I don't. 
I respect me more than I care about what you think about me, respectfully. I recognize that every problem I ever had led me to something greater. I told you the first book I ever wrote at 18 came from a big problem I had. Couldn't get an internship, so I wrote a book. I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have become an attorney. I really don't, had I not grown up in Baltimore City and seen what I seen. I really don't. I saw all these problems. I saw powerful people stepping on others. I saw it, I watched it, I witnessed it. And that informed me. Every great moment that I ever had in my life, I'm here to tell you, it came out of a dark place. It is a reason why when we are told the creation story of Earth, it starts in darkness. Every day starts in darkness, not in light. Every seed starts in darkness, not in light. Every dream starts in darkness, not in light. I want you to begin to appreciate the problem you have because maybe you were assigned the problem by the divine knowing that you could solve it. Have you considered that? I mean, even the cartoons show us this. I mean, all of the great cartoon characters, they had some catastrophe. Was it Bruce Wayne, Batman lost both his parents? I mean, that's what gave him such a fuel for justice. The truth of the matter is Clark Kent was never Superman. The real truth is Superman was Clark Kent. What am I trying to say? It was a human with a superpower. That's you. It wasn't a superhuman with, hum with, with, with frailties. No. You're a human with a superpower. That's all the cartoons are doing. They're out picturing and they're reminding us of your divine nature. That's why we, we so closely align with it, even on a subconscious level, even though we may not know why. You're a human with a superpower. And the way to activate that superpower is to recognize the places and spaces in your life where adversity has met you. That's, I already told you, life will borrow pain to provoke you to your purpose. Life will. Life will. Life will borrow pain to push you and nudge you in the place of where you were meant to be aligned all along. What problems in your life have you cried about that might be the exact thing that's going to take you to the next level? You'll never meet a great leader who didn't have a great problem. You, you just won't. You'll never meet somebody that have, has great impact that doesn't have something in their life that is bothering them, that they feel a little weird about, still, that they look at and say, oh, that was a hard moment. The irony about history, I studied history when I was at Morehouse College, I love history, is that I always believe that the way we tell these so-called great men and women's story is different than how they would talk about it. If they came and told you their story, they'd be talking about the losses and the failures and the times they got hit in the face and they had to rise above it. We tend to glorify and romanticize and lionize people and we should not do that. Because in making them great and larger than life, you dismiss the God in you. You dismiss the God spark in you. You dismiss the fact that that adversity that you're going through is what's going to take you to the next level. Listen to me. Somebody listening to me now, you're frustrated, you're angry about what's going on around you. Maybe you're right here in New York City with me. You're seeing all these things that are happening and you've created all this music and you're using music as an outlet. I'm here to tell you that everything you've seen, everything you've experienced, everything you've gone through personally and that you've seen your friends go through, if you channel that in your music the right way, that's what's going to take you to the next level. I'm telling you it will. I've learned that the divine has a sense of humor. We pray for great things to happen in our lives and often we're answered with a problem because the problem is the key to your destiny. We're gonna take one more break and then when we come back, we're gonna go from patterns to problems to promises.
is a great promise over your life. I can't wait to talk to you about it. Stay with me. I'll be back. I've got about 10 minutes left. Stick with me because I've already shared with you about patterns. I've talked to you about the power of the problems in your life, even if they hurt, and they probably will hurt, but the power of your problems to lead you into alignment. Now I want to talk about the promises. I want to leave on a high note. There's a promise over your life. You are important to God, and there's something spectacular you're meant to do in the earth. You might say, Daryl, what do you mean there's a promise? Who made the promise? Well, the presence that's never in absence made the promise. The promise is that there's an expected end over your life. That's what destiny means. That's what destiny means. There's an expected end where you are going to understand in a way you've never understood before. That's what destiny is. That there is a place of great expectancy. Now, I want to say this. I don't want that great expectancy to only be on the other side of this veil. So many people are living for the by and by whether you call it heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is within you, but I don't even want to touch that. Or you, you call it nirvana. Or you call it some other word. I don't want you to live beyond where you are. I want you to be present where your feet are. Be where your feet are. I want you to know that there's a promise for you right now. There's a great king who said, I would have fainted If I didn't believe, I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You're important to God. Now, presently, in your state, in your situation, right where you are. And there's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life. I don't know why I I feel the need to say this. It's tugging on my heart. It's saying, Daryl, I'm so flawed. I made so many mistakes. I messed up so big. You don't understand. Yeah, but this this is the kind of cool thing about it. You're also called to reach people on earth who are flawed, conflicted, going through things, struggling. That's all of us on some level. So, so once you sort of come to recognize that maybe, you know, their flavor of ice cream is different, but everybody has struggled with ice cream at some point in their life and is still struggling on some level with ice cream. Once you recognize that, you understand All are flawed. So flawed people are being called to flawed people. You wouldn't be relatable if you didn't go through what you went through. You see, people wouldn't listen to you if you had, if it hadn't have happened. I told you, I'm about to get the promise, but I need to stick on this problem for a quick second. There's rooms that I walk in now. I could have never walked into before just because I graduated from Harvard law. I'm telling you just because I was an attorney, I, 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 I couldn't because they wouldn't believe me. Yes, I still have that world, but there's a whole nother level of impact I have now because of the journey that I went through, my own personal journey, my own personal struggle through the American penal system. Because of that, I have a whole nother level of gravitas. I have a whole nother network. I have people that I could have never reached before. I'm doing things that I would have never been able to do before. I want you to understand that. There's something spectacular you're meant to do with your life and stop judging yourself and doubting yourself and criticizing yourself and making yourself feel bad about all the things that you feel like you messed up. Everything was meant to bring you to this place so you can reach somebody. There's somebody. Nobody's called to everybody. Nobody's called where everybody's going to like them. I don't care who you are. You can Google Mother Teresa. I mean, what did Mother Teresa have to do wrong with people? You can Google her, and people got all types of negative stuff to say. Do you know what that means? No matter how you live your life, somebody's going to have something to say. The good thing is you're not called to everybody. You're called to somebody. Promise. What's the promise? I'll tell you the clue to your promise. What's the dream? What's the dream? What's the dream? What's the dream? What was the dream? Not now. So many people, you just let your dreams go and you're, you're not living your own dreams. You, you picked up fragments of other people's dreams. I'm not talking about that. That's not the authenticity of that. And that's not authentic, authentic, authentic. Got to get the word out. Who were you before what the world told you what you couldn't be? When I do this seminar with people, I, I ask them, what did you want to be when you were eight years old, when you were seven, when you, when you were six? 
There was a time you, you believed that you could do something great in the world. There was a time where you believed you were important to God and there's something spectacular you were meant to do with your life. I need you to go back to that place. I want to take you to the words of the master who said, take me to where you laid them. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Where did you lay down the dream? That's the promise. Do you want to know something? The clue to what dream you had in your heart is the promise for your life. In every seed is the power and the plan of manifestation. All you have to do is put the seed in the ground. Where are my seeds? Where are my seeds, y'all? I always carry seeds with me and I carry mustard seeds because it's said that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, just a mustard seed, just a mustard seed, it you can move mountains. This little seed, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little seed. It's so little. I mean, you can... I don't even know. It's fitting right there. So little. I carry these with me because I'm always talking about seeds because all you have to do is put this little seed, this little mustard seed in the ground. It'll grow into one of the biggest trees. And all you have to do is water it in this one little seed. This little seed is the power and the plan of manifestation for something great. It's so below, so above, so below. Just like this seed, it, your dream is a seed. It wouldn't have come to you if you weren't equipped to make it happen. That's why you have certain dreams that you have and your brothers have different dreams and your children have different dreams and your parents have different dreams. Why is that? Because you're all meant to do something different. You're important to God and there's something spectacular you're meant to do with the world, in the world, with your life. You're called. As we come to a close, I want you to start thinking about the promises. That's the note I want you to leave on. I don't want you to just think about it as a dream. I want you to think about it as a seed. You got so caught up in life trying to figure out how the seed would grow into the tree. And that's where you messed up. <laughs> that's where you messed up. That's where you messed up. I mean, even the mother that's carrying the baby isn't worried about that. All she's worried about and concerned about is incubating the, the, the conditions that allows the baby to grow. It's still stress over, well, how will the little seed, how will the sperm turn into the arm and the eye and the leg? It's all happening in the dark anyway. It's none of your business how the seed becomes the tree, quite honestly. It's none of your business, really, how the dream comes into manifestation. All you have to do is hold on to the dream and water the dream and understand that with every dream, there is an accompanying promise. That's part of your spiritual birthright. It is. If I had more time, I'd tell you about it. <laughs> 